All right, guys. Calm C for the month of January. So bear with me in this video because I'm going to have to readjust some of the croppings on the screen just so you guys are able to see more. It's a little bigger on the screen. But for the month of January, we went way down. Only like $171 compared to December. But of course, in December, we had one of the huger flips where I purchased the card for like $70 and flipped it for like $200 on here. Which was really, really crazy because that was actually supposed to just come to me. Um, it was supposed to be when I sent the whole big package into it. As you guys can see, February's already started, but January 8, two cards sold. A little over, if you average it, like $2 and something a card. Remember, a lot of this stuff that did sell when you guys see it was off Upper Deck EPAC. And, you know, it was just sitting there and they let me throw it on there. So I was getting a couple cents here and there. Figured what the heck, because otherwise it's not doing nothing but sitting on Upper Deck EPAC. All right, let's show you. There's only two cards that I bought. So let me get this screen here fixed up real quick for y'all. Shouldn't take too, too long at all on this. All right. Let me see if I can pull it down here a little bit for you guys. Alright, so the two cards I bought, the first one, let me pull this up just a little so you guys can see it. This one here, the Chris Letang. This is actually a piece of the net from the All-Star Game, material net cord. Pretty cool card. Letang, you know, is now being overshadowed by Carlson, one of the original uh, Penguins. So this was just a cool card to pick up for PC from his All-Star game from 2020. Uh, they probably do roughly around $40, $45 is my guess, but it's just a cool card. There's a McDavid out there that I've been wanting to get, but people are wanting like 2.5x onto it. The other card over here, there we go, I had to find where my mouse went to. This Lafreniere, this is the Quad Diamond out of 99, his rookie. It's actually CSG10, which is really hard to get, especially on black diamond cards. I picked this up very cheap, too, off of auctions. Like I watch a lot of them, and there's not much I pick up on it anymore because a lot of the stuff, you know, it's not slammed during a promotion that they were running over Christmas. So this, this was a cool piece to, you know, squeak in on. Um, a lot of people, I call them Laffy Taffy. But, uh, you know, we're up and down on him. I look at he's playing, well, he was playing last I was watching, you know, about a month or two ago. A lot still on the second uh, power play. Might have changed since then. And, you know, just where his line, ooh, lines were at. I forgot my cat was under me. I just stepped on her paw. It scared the living crap out of me for a second. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, always you always got something going on in the videos. I know, Extreme, always something. Yeah, I forgot the cat was under me, but pretty cool pickup there as well, too. This was actually pulled out of a pack off of EPAC, but everything else still on there from before. Go into sales history, and I'll fix this up again. Let me see how we can do this. Let's, uh... So that's a day of the sales there. Pull it on over. And then... Eh, you guys don't need the times, do you? Let's go to the dates so you guys can see. A little more of a picture time. So, really, it was, you know, like I said, it was, I think it was the 82 cards or something like that. You know, oh, top card's not showing here. Yeah, so we're starting off here. Uh, this is another card I pulled out. Or, no, yeah, I pulled this out of a pack, too. You know, $2.85 is what I cleared. You guys see this column here is what I got. This is, or what it sold for, what I got off it, off their 5% fees. A lot of stuff, you know, originally that I did send in, like this Marquise um, Gold Border. This was, like, up there around a dollar something, but just because people are sending it in by the time it gets posted, you know, it's a loss of 12, well, actually 14 cents. It happens. It happens. Or I could just stuck it on there for seventy-four cents and not pay to anything. It would have stuck out there forever. I don't know. Kind of up in the air on that. You guys, let me know. Like, if stuff's under fifty cents, you know, and there's a good bit of it, do you just cut your losses, or do you just put it seventy-four cents and never have to pay the vault fee? Kind of curious what everybody'll say onto the comments onto. It might make me rethink some strategy onto it. 
All these young guns, this was all sitting in upper deck E pack. I just took what I can get for them. Uh, same with this Goodwood Champions. I opened up a couple boxes. You guys can see this LeBron James. That's their value. It's not. This is around. They were selling for like twenty two. I let it go for nineteen fifty. I picked it up for ten dollars. Set in ten fifty. Uh, got eighteen fifty two cleared. So not bad. Put it towards another card. More Goodwin champions. I mean, just stuff that I opened up in boxes and set it up over. Same with uh, a lot of this uh, Fleer Ultra and stuff like that. There. This was kind of shocking. I tried their auctions out. Right. Thomas Hurdle out thirty five auto. Never would have thought it would have went for $35. This here, their promotion was you pay $0.75 cents and then what you get see is what you get on. I thought it was a great opportunity uh, to send it over. So $35 for it. Not bad at all. That's pretty much a good chunk out of, was it like a sixth or something, fifth out of what I sold for the month? Again, just more stuff. Uh, 68 base card of a rookie stars of Panella. I got it in somebody's dollar box. I probably paid 60, 70 cents on to it. Got 283. This was another auction. I thought it would go for more. So just I, I tried it out just to see what would happen. I think this might have been like the third card that I tried on auction, but still 355 took it. More stuff that was an e pack. This I purchased in this at a show. Um, I want to say this I got probably about 80 cents on. So really not too good. I was, you know, pretty much right around. No, I lost money on 17 cents. I, I, I might have put in it for less. I can't remember. I'd have to pull my old spreadsheet. This relic I picked up at a dollar. So 50 cents to add it made $1.29 on it. Uh, more Upper Deck E-Pack stuff. Uh, this I said it just took the loss on it at four cents. So this may have been my first auction. Ten fifty was out of the pack that was sitting there for a while. Another one was sitting on upper deck e pack e pack. I mean, it wasn't bad. Just picking stuff up that I normally probably would have never sold. It was sitting upper deck e pack. This was just sitting in a box that I sent into it. So I was in it for 50 cents, made, you know, 47. It's nothing like real crazy on to it at all. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? We're only on the 18th. A lot of Upper Deck e pack stuff. Or stuff I picked up in collections that I was on like a penny on a dollar and I just took what I can get. Like this O'Neill Cruz has been sitting in my value box for 50 cents. Nobody purchased it. I I'm probably in on the pesos on a dollar, so basically 20 cents profit. Stafford I picked up for a dollar, sold. Well, $1.50, so 320 profit on. Some of these, like I said, were all from when I picked up pesos on a dollar. So there's anything minus 50 cents is pretty good on. Same with Cade Cunningham. Upper Deck e pack e pack I don't remember off here. I probably sent that in. Allen Iverson, Topps Rookie. Bought it for a dollar, then for a dollar fifty, sold for seven twelve. More stuff that was in pesos on the dollar for the sold prism. So basically, everything you see over fifty cents was profit. Same with the Jordan. Oh no, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, a couple cents onto it. And then the stuff wasn't great. I can tell you that now. Same with Lamelo's, Tyrese. Oh, we were back in December. Oops, my bad. I went a little bit too far. Must be doing January's. Wait, why did that? Oh, I was looking at the wrong day. I was looking over here. Sorry. We're still in uh, January. A uh, bunch of more Upper Deck E Pack. This Kenny Pickett just put it out there. I don't even remember where I got it from. Sold instantly. I just got rid of a lot of his relics. 
I moved I moved a lot of it way back in the day into autos, and I'm still sitting on Kenny Pickett autos. Uh, Herbert got another one that was in like my um, bulk or what you call collection pickups. So basically, dollar something made onto it. Where are we at here? January fourth. All right, we got one more page. Okay, yeah, this should all be the right way. So I see another Jordan. I picked this up in a dollar box. It was two dollars onto it. I forgot this is a two dollar card. Sold it for seven seventy five. Got seven thirty six. So take two fifty off. That's what I got. This was oh, this was the first one that I got. This was on Upper Deck Epac sent over auction. It got the full eleven twenty seven minus the seventy five cents I already put into it. Uh, a little more vintage. There'll be more vintage going out to them. You guys will start seeing a lot more. I think I've set in just this past week probably about 400 cards. And I got another like 150 here I got to send in to them. But I've been trying to space them out. But yeah, that's pretty much it. A lot of Upper Deck EPAC, EPAC. A lot of Upper Deck EPAC was selling. So overall, when I looked at with a couple of the cards, I just took the losses on because they were a lot of base. And when I originally set them in they were doing like a dollar fifty to dollar seventy five ish just i guess everybody had the same idea so when there's like i don't know 40 cards they're now under 75 cents they're down to around 50 i'm just like you know it's gonna take a while do i let it sit there or do i just take the money and the couple cent loss and move on but overall out of the 171 dollars it's sold and this is, you know, what I had into the cards. And then the 50 cents or the 75 cents onto it was really good profit for the month. Now, granted, like I said, a lot was sitting on Upper Deck EPAC, which I don't remember what I bought the stuff into for the boxes. But overall, just the cards that I did send in that were not Upper Deck EPAC, I should say. I still made a profit of a little over $67 onto it. So, nothing huge on crazy gains onto it for the month, but I think it's the more you send in, the more you have on there, the more it sells. Like, this month has already started off very weird. We're only at, uh, today's the 10th of February, and it's just been really crazy on the sales. Like, I'll just show, give you guys a quick glimpse onto this. This stuff here I bought for like a dollar to two dollars a card, minus the Tidlin. I was in it for like 75 cents onto those. But just a lot more bigger stuff. These Gunner Hendersons I found in a dollar box. So, you know, pretty much got my money back plus, you know, 100% fold a little over onto it. Same with like Miko. So, like, this month will be a little more exciting because, like, a lot of this stuff I picked up for, like, a dollar to two dollars minus this was an Upper Deck E-Pack. But stuff's been picking up a lot more in February in sales that I posted on there. But we'll see where it ends up at here eventually. Jordan that I sold on there. I think this Jordan here I picked up for, I'd have to look. I haven't done the numbers on it. I think it was, like, two to three dollars onto it. So, pretty good profit. But when you take into consideration you're going to shows and digging through for three to four hours, insane. Insane on to it. But overall, I mean, it was a down month in sales. Um, let me go back here real quick. Volume was way down, but again, December, I sold a whole lot of Upper Deck EPAC stuff anywhere from like four cents to, you know, a dollar on to it that was sitting there. And we just started really towards, uh, I think I started this around the middle of November, and that's when I started dumping stuff in. Nothing, like I said, real crazy, but I figured I'd, I'm going to give this a good shot for a year, and we'll see where it lies at. With stuff that I would normally sell at, like, 50 cents, if I have to spend 50 to get it on there, and then I'm making, like, a dollar profit... Maybe it makes sense just to send it all to Com C. I don't know. I've read a lot of people's comments uh, off the other Com C videos. And I do appreciate it because it helps me out being a new seller on Com C and still learn like um, with the pricing and stuff. But my biggest question is, 
since I'm still under the 5,000, I don't have the, like, the store and stuff like that. Uh, everything 75 cents and below is free storage onto it. Everything over costs you a penny a month after 90 days being on there. So whenever you get stuff that you know originally is up there for like $1.52, and all of a sudden it's down to like 60 cents onto it, do you just hurry up and move it, take your couple cents? Or do you just list it like 74 and just let everybody else keep, you know, underbidding onto it? I've seen some people say, oh, well, you know, everything goes under mine, I buy it up. I don't know if that's really a good idea when you're talking about, like, base optic lamello ball rookies and stuff like that. I, I just don't know. I could see, like, if you're talking numbered cards and autographs and stuff, maybe that works. I don't know. You guys let me know. I'm always interested. Uh, I've always read the feedback on to it. But like I said, January really down month on to it. But overall, wasn't bad. I did have two nice pickups. I'm um, hoping February we get around two to two fifty in sales. It might be more, depending on how much stuff that they're gonna give me per night on to there. But I have noticed like hockey sells crazy on Com C. I sell more hockey than any other sports, and I just got all the golf. Well, I'd say about sixty percent all that golf that I picked up listed. Two of it, two or three have sold already, but that's it out of it. So maybe golf was not a smart idea. I don't know. Different eyes. I know the stuff goes on to eBay after a couple days too. Um, that's the one thing I wanted to look at here. Let me shush. Go back down so it start right around here. All right, let me just. I know somebody's going to ask this question. I totally forgot. My bad. I'm going to drag this over. So we're going from right here. Den. Oh, you guys can't see Den Man. They're Den Man down. Uh, how many things actually sold on eBay? So one. But that was an auction, too. This was not, not, oh, that was an auction too. I tried. This just sold on eBay. So that'd be really one fixed price. Part just means that, you know, somebody had a bunch of things into it across multiple people. So one. Ah, I'm on the wrong screen. Two. Three, four, five, six, auction six, seven. So roughly seven items sold on eBay at fixed pricing for the month of January. Uh, not bad. I mean, it had eyes on to it. I didn't have to do the listing, plus all the other stuff's on there. But I, knew, I figured somebody was going to ask me how many eBay total fixed pricing sales that I had for the month. Uh, seven. I mean, seven that I didn't have to do any of the real work to. So, not bad. But, yeah, hockey's probably been my strongest. Now, granted, a lot of it was from Upper Deck EPAC, like I said, going over. A lot of stuff going in. A lot of relics and autos are on their way. We probably won't start seeing that stuff, I'm guessing, end of March through April, starting to slowly trickle in. And anybody does send in, I think I covered this in another video, when your packages go in, you don't see them all come in at once. You might get one here, one here, one here, then 20 this day. It all varies. There's days I don't have anything. There's days that I'll have like a 15 off of one order, two off of this, one off of this, and then 10 off another one go in. It all varies. It all varies when they release the stuff on to my still first package, middle of November. I think it's only halfway done. That was over 300 cards, and yet I had other orders with 96 in it completely done. So, no idea how they do that stuff and how they decide what's going to go up. But that is it for this video. I went a little bit longer and planned, but it was just some stuff that started hitting me that I wanted to talk about to begin with, and I just skipped over my notes here 
All right, guys. Appreciate y'all watching the uh, Com C series. It'll get a little more interesting as more va more bigger stuff goes into it, like the five and ten dollar cards that I've started sending in. Oh, actually, yeah, some of them are five to ten dollars going in, and I'm still looking at a couple bigger pickups on there. Those will probably be this month as well too. Learn that, guys. Take care. I'm out. See you next one.